two years after Final Fantasy XIV's successful relaunch with A Realm Reborn, the much-anticipated expansion Heaven Sword was released. The expansion delivered a vast amount of brand new content to Eorzea. With 18 dungeons in total, there was definitely enough content to keep you busy. But which one of these dungeons stood out? What was the best dungeon of Heavensward? That's the question we'll try to answer in this video. It's time for another Top 10 video. Just like the previous videos, we'll be scoring the dungeon based on the following criteria. Length. This doesn't necessarily mean physical length, but more perceived length. Basically how annoying it would be to get this on a roulette. Map design, meaning the overall layout of the dungeon, architecture, mob placement, and pacing. Bosses. Well, bosses are based on mechanics, interest, memorability, and of course, difficulty. Atmosphere, here meaning whether the dungeon sells the illusion it's set out to do, in other words, it's immersion. And the final criteria, monster variety. How well do the monsters actually fit the dungeon? Is there enough variety? Also, a big disclaimer before we begin. These are obviously scores based on our personal opinions. Yours might, and probably will, differ, and that's fine. Let us know in the comments why you agree and or disagree, and maybe give us your top 10 list as well. Okay, with that out of the way, I guess there's no reason to keep you waiting. Let's get started. It's time to reveal Speakers of Hydland's Top 10 Dungeons from Heavensward. Number 10. The Vault. Okay, I know, controversial already. I expect a lot of you will have this dungeon way higher on your lists, uh, but hear me out. The Vault is a truly beautiful dungeon. Unlike a lot of the dull, dark, and grey dungeons you've passed through before at this point, the Vault is almost the complete opposite. The Vault presents itself as a massive cathedral with a high ceiling, lots of light, shiny floors, and beautiful architecture. In terms of length, the Vault doesn't feel too long, perhaps helped by its pretty design, and long gaps between gates, which allows for large pulls and faster runs if you have a good party. The Vault's enemies are thematically correct, but quite boring, consisting mostly of Elizan soldiers and priests. There are some interesting mobs as well though, such as the chess horses and that annoying priest that summons enemies even if you kill him before he's done casting. The bosses make up for this though and all feel unique in their own way, and the final boss is a good reward for climbing all the way up to the top of the vault. Sickness must be purged. Unfortunately, where the vault falls flat for us is the music. The track consists entirely of a church organ and while that's not necessarily a bad thing, the theme quickly becomes a mess of discordant sounds about 30 seconds in. It has its good parts, but is unfortunately the weakest part of the dungeon, which is why the vault is number 10 on this list. Number 9. The Fractal Continuum. Don't you just love a good Allegan dungeon? It's got all those shiny veins in the walls. This dungeon gets the number 9 spot for not only being a pretty elegant dungeon, but for being a relatively quick one. The gates are few and far between, so you get a greater sense of control over what mobs to pull where. Design-wise, it's not so different from what we've seen before from elegant themed dungeons, but it does contain a lot of data terminals with all kinds of neat elegant lore bits that's genuinely worth reading. Ask your party first, though. The music in this dungeon is a fantastic remix of the Asus La theme, but it might feel a little out of place. And the mobs are mostly Allegan Machina, like the Clockwork Soldiers and Knights, and bioweapons like the Chimeras and Nagas. But it does have mannequins. Mannequins are cool. Look, no face. The dungeon's final boss is spectacular and unique, with some mechanics that would wipe many Duty Finder parties back in the day. The curator may very well be the best part of this dungeon. Number 8. The Etherochemical Research Facility. Well, 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 if it isn't another elegant dungeon. 
This dungeon takes everything Fractal Continuum has and improves it. The design is stunning, with even more glowy bits that really pop in this environment. The map is also clearly divided into three distinct zones, each with their own sets of mobs. The first area having the vibrant blue lights containing the more basic Alagan Machina, but progress further and you're facing off with Garlean Machina as well. The second area is filled with an ominous red light and contains a plethora of bioweapons that we've all seen before. And finally, that pale whitish green light area with the high heel shab teeth that leads to the dungeon's final boss, where everything is uh, kind of gross to be honest. What even is that? Is that meat? As gross as this fleshy boss room is, it's perhaps the coolest boss up to this point in the expansion. It's a pretty intense two-part fight, where you end up fighting the Asian Prime. Speaking of Prime... Number 7. Belsar's Wall Belsar's Wall marked the end of 3.5's story and had us invade the wall that had kept Alamigo separated from its brothers and sisters in Eorzea for decades. That obviously means we're in for an epic dungeon, and for the most part, it is. The music, what I can only describe as a Garlean reinterpretation of the Black Shroud theme, gives us an eerie glimpse into what the Black Shroud would have sounded like had Garlemald's invasion of Eorzea succeeded. The dungeon's mobs are generally well placed, and the dungeon doesn't feel too long, with one major exception. That moving platform part. This kind of artificially extending the duration of a dungeon is never fun and feels cheap because you're not actually treated to any new visuals when the platform moves around between mob dispensers. In terms of bosses, I guess there's not much to say other than sloppy. Number 6. The Lost City of Amdapur. Hard. We return to a wet Amdapur in our sixth spot. This dungeon's aesthetic is truly unique, which is why it's found this high up on our list. The haunting remix of the dungeon's original theme paired with the rain and general state of this once vibrant and beautiful city sets the tone perfectly. The dungeon is also divided into three very distinct areas. The old, broken and overgrown topside part, the dark descent, and the pristine and, lack of a better word, divine looking part, which honestly feels really weird to come back to after Shadowbringers. Especially considering the two final bosses of the dungeon, the Winged Lion and Kuribu, who both reappeared in Shadowbringers as Sin Eaters. Here's hoping we'll get more Andapur lore in the future. Number 5. The Great Goobal Library. Hard. While the Great Goobal Library's normal mode didn't make it on this list, the hard mode definitely did. This is in many ways an improvement on everything we didn't like in the normal mode. The dungeon allows for much bigger pulls between gates, which makes it a really quick dungeon to run through if you've got good DPS with you. We are observed with bosses that feel unique, and while I'm kind of done with Demon Wall at this point, it was quite funny seeing the boss presented just like the normal mode version, but immediately have the book fade away to reveal its disgusting corkscrew ass. The final part of the dungeon is a brand new section with nice lighting and these cool looking mammoths with cute little wigs and hats. Plus points, of course, for having both the boy and the dragon gay and the literary analysis of it. My favorite book, which is why this dungeon is number five on this list. No, it's not. That's not actually why it's number five, but it's, it's a plus point. Number four. The Anti-Tower. We're gonna keep it Charlian for a bit longer with this classic Heavensward dungeon. The Anti-Tower wowed us with its whimsical upside-down design. The bosses are especially good in the Anti-Tower, with a frog singing It's Not Easy Being Green, a Spriggan with a Davy Bowie tribute, and the final boss, the Nightmare, that is Calcabrina. The length of the dungeon is average at best, but the dungeon is structured in a way that makes it harder to get bored. At some point, you're literally in a place filled with floating cabinets. It's weird. I think that's the word that best describes this dungeon, actually. It's just weird. 
weird enough to end up as number four on our list. Number three. Selfatol. While it's sad that Selfatol was relegated to a dungeon, it was at least done well. Selfatol is not like most mountain themed dungeons in Heavensward. This dungeon has a lot of varied environments, which eventually leads inside the mountain, revealing a huge amount of Ixali buildings. A truly impressive sight to behold. Also, baby pigs. <coughs> The journey to the top feels epic, and we're introduced to three Ixali bosses that all have their own unique mechanics. Gating feels very natural here, which is rare for 14's early dungeons, and we can't forget about this thing. That looks... normal. The theme is a remix of the Natalin theme, a remix I never thought I'd ever hear, but Soken has once again produced gold, and the theme helps lift the dungeon up into third place. Number 2 Sorkai. Let's just say it before we move on. The fans have titties for eyes. Okay, we can move on. Sorkai is one of the most beautiful dungeons in Heavensward, and it just gets prettier and prettier as you continue through the dungeon. Mobs feel natural here, like they all genuinely reside here before you come along and kill them all. The cute sleeping box monsters at the beginning that you have to wake up in order to kill is a bit harsh, but it adds to the uniqueness of the dungeon. The music here is also a big plus. Sorkai is not only unique in map design and mob variety, the music for the first and last boss differs from the regular dungeon boss themes. Again, adding more uniqueness to the whole dungeon experience. Speaking of bosses, this is another field where the dungeon really shines. The two final bosses have arenas that aren't strictly square or circular. Those bosses will also enrage if your DPS is too low, which is extremely rare in regular dungeons in 14. All in all, Sorkai is a beautiful and unique dungeon that brings new experiences to the players without being too difficult or too long. And come on, that final boss area looks so beautiful with its golden sky, which is why it made it all the way up to number two on our list. Number 1 Saint Mosian's Arboretum Our number 1 goes to the Arboretum in the Dravanian Hinterlands. This place looks stunning and is close to perfection in terms of visuals and boss and monster variety. The dungeon has many gates, but allows for a lot of mobs to be pulled between them. The dungeon is relatively long, spreading over multiple maps, but with the monster variety and the amount of mobs you can pull between gates, it sure doesn't feel very long. The bosses all feel unique, even with the first boss, which brings us a new take on the Morbles' bad breath mechanic. The second part of the dungeon is a beehive, which pits us against a queen hawk, which has a multitude of attacks that can wipe parties that aren't paying close attention to their surroundings. The last boss, Belladonna, was a unique model at the time and oh my god, that disgusting corkscrew butt, I swear! The mob variety is great. You'll encounter anything from Ochus to Bilocos to, yes, the best mob, Corpocurse. You also encounter some Morbles, and they still feel like a threat in this dungeon with their signature bad breath attacks. So in summary, St. Mosian's Arboretum is one of the prettiest dungeons in the game, paired with a great monster variety, fun and engaging bosses, corpa curse, immersive atmosphere, and beautiful music. St. Mosian's Arboretum is Speakers of Hydland's number one dungeon from Heavensward. So that's our list. Do you agree with our picks or would you pick differently? If so, why? Let us know in the comments below and we'd be interested to see what your list would look like. Thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe for more 14 content in the future. See you in the next one. Until then, may you ever walk in the light of the crystal. Soken has once again produced gold and the theme left hips. What? The dungeon's final boss is spectacular and unique with some mechanics that would wipe many duty pinder farties back. Farties? <laughs>